The preceding problem didn't start as a, an inequality, but we encountered an inequality in solving it. This problem starts from the very beginning being an inequality. What we're looking for are all the values of x that make this expression true. What we're going to take advantage of here is our ability to solve equations and then recognize that equal separates the less thans from the more thans. So our first step in solving this and any of the more difficult inequalities will be to solve the equation. You say, well, there is no equation there. Well, we're going to solve an equation based on this using the tools that we've seen before. I'm going to factor this. When I factor this, there is a common factor of x. And, an, and another expression that I can continue factoring. So I have x plus 3 times x minus 3. And we know now what the three solutions to the equation are. They are x equals 0 or negative 3 or positive 3. But no two things. This is, these are not solutions to the inequality. For example, these values of x make this expression equal to 0. So we do not want to include these in our answer. So I'm going to make a note to myself that these are not included in the answer, but they do provide me vital information. These are the values that separate the good stuff from the bad stuff. And so what I'm going to do now is test each interval resulting. There's an interval that goes from negative infinity up to negative 3. These are all the numbers that are less than negative 3. There's the interval between negative 3 and 0. There's the interval between 0 and 3. Notice I'm working my way from left to right on the number line. And then there are all the numbers that are bigger than 3. And now what I'm going to do, and what I suggest you do, is test each of these by taking a little test value from each and see if it works. When I plug in, say, negative 4, I'm going to put a little question mark there. Maybe it is part of the solution, maybe it isn't. I'm going to now try this back in the original. I'll, I'll do the calculations. You can verify that they're correct. Negative 4 cubed is negative 64. Minus 9 times negative 4 is plus 36. And what you'll observe here is that, yes, this number is less than 0. So this interval will be part of my solution. Let's try another interval. Try this one. Say x equals negative 1. That's in there. And when I substitute it in, I get negative 1. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1. Minus 9 times negative 1 is plus 9. That is not less than 0. So this interval is not part of the solution. Number 1. Does that work? Again, substitute it in. 1 cubed is 1 minus 9 times 1. That difference is less than 0. So that interval will be included in my answer. This, try to take a value from here. X, does 4 work? Substitute it in and see. 4 cubed is 64 minus 9 times 4. That is not less than 0. So this interval is not part of my solution. Summarizing everything, I have two intervals that are perfectly good. In set notation, when we have collections of solutions, and we want to put them all together in one big solution, we form a union. So I have, as the solution to this problem, negative infinity to negative 3 